This is the third section of chapter three on equations and inequalities. And in this section, we're going to be looking at simultaneous equations on graphs. So in this section, we're going to be finding the solution to simultaneous equations by using the graph of the equation. So if we want to find an accurate solution to a simultaneous equation uh, by using a graph, we need an accurate graph. So this is not going to be a sketch. Uh, we want to plot values and then uh, try and draw that graph as accurate as we can. To help us with that, use graph paper if you've got some available or as a very minimum squared paper, centimetre squared paper or half centimetre squared paper. And then what you can do, you can check your graph using a CG50 if you have one. If not, you can use uh, the Desmos app, which you can download on your phone, or the Desmos website, and you can easily draw graphs, sketch them um, uh, on, on the app or the website, and then you can actually scroll over to the points of intersection and it will tell you what the, the values are. So that's a useful check if you're doing this um, outside of an exam situation. Or if you've got a CG50 in your own exam, you can use a CG50 to do that for you. Example four. On the same axis, draw the graphs of 2x plus y equals 8, 3x minus y equals 20, and then we're going to use that graph to write down the solutions to the simultaneous equation. So I've got a, a grid ready here. What I'm going to do is find some coordinates for each line, plot them on the graph, and then uh, join up those points. So let's start with the 2x plus 3y equals 8. 2x plus 3y equals 8. Now, ideally, I want whole number coordinates. I don't want to really want to be plotting things like 2 over 7 or some whole numbers. So 1 would be if I make x equal to 4 so that I get um, 8 here, then y will need to be 0. So I'll put y equals 0. So there's my first point which is the coordinate 4, 0. So I'll just plot that on, 4, 0. So I know my line is going to go through there. I want another whole number coordinate. Now, making x equal 0, I'm not going to get a whole number for y. But I think if I make y equal to 2, that makes 6 here. And then x can equal 1. So if I have an x equal to 1, and then y equal to 2, I think that gives me 8, doesn't it? 2 times 1, that's 2, plus 6 is 8, yeah, so that works. So I've managed to get a whole number, coordinate 1, 2. So I'll plot that, 1, 2, so 1 across 2 up there, and I'll draw my line as best I can through those two points. Right, so there's my line, and I've labelled it up as 2x plus 3y is equal to 8. I now want the same with the other equation, and that is 3y, oh, sorry, 3x minus y is equal to 23. And I want the same thing again. I want to just get some whole number coordinates and some whole numbers that are going to fit on this scale. Okay, so I've managed to get uh, these coordinates that when x is 7 um, I can have y equal to negative 2 so if I put y is 7 uh, x is 7 so I'll basically get 3 times 7 21 and if I wait, make y is equal to negative 2 minus minus 2 makes 23 so that gives me the coordinate 7 negative 2 and then if I make x equal to 8 I can have y is equal to uh, 1 so I'll basically be doing 3 times 8 24 minus 1 23 so the coordinate 8 1 so I'm going to plot those on my grid and then join them up so that's my second line drawn. I've sort of colour coded them so you can see which 
goes with which and I can see I've got a nice point of intersection looks like a whole number there so this is where the accurate drawing helps because if it's not accurate you know you could have all sorts of problems trying to read off the point of intersection and a point of intersection that's the solution to the simultaneous equation so the actual point of intersection is the coordinate 7 minus 2 but we need to write it as a solution to a simultaneous equation and that will be x equals 7 y equals negative 2 so remember a coordinate is a point of intersection whereas a solution is a value of x and a value of y so don't write a solution as a coordinate and we don't really want to write a point of intersection as a value of x and y we want to write those separately so x equals 7 y equals negative 2 solution to these equations and I could check it by using algebra to see that it is in fact a solution example 5 on the same axis draw the graphs of 2x plus 3y equals 0 y equals x squared minus 3x plus 1 and like the last example we're going to use our graph to write down the solutions to the simultaneous equations and that's going to be the point of intersection of these two graphs so starting with the linear equation the 2x plus y equals 3 if I make x equals 0 that means I can make y equals 3 and get the coordinate 0 3 and then if I make x equal to 2 so I get 4 here and make y equal to negative 1 I get the coordinate to negative 1 so just like before I'm trying to get whole number coordinates okay so there's my line plotted my 2x plus y equals 3 so I'll move on to the second one my quadratic y is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 1 now for the quadratic a better way of trying to get points for this would be to use a table like this and get a range of values as many as I can and I'm just using the table function of my calculator and uh, if I do that the values I get for y are 5 1 and I've got negative 1 negative 1 and then 1 again and 5 so I'm going to plot those points and join them up so these are my points here I'm going to join them up in, the, in a moment we just need to make sure that when we get to the bottom of the quadratic here it's not going to have a flat bottom it's going to go down and then it's coming back up again so there is a lower value between 1 and 2 but my table hasn't given it because I've just gone up in ones so make sure you just don't flatten it off at the bottom that we get that nice U shape so here's my plotted quadratic and I can see that I have these points of intersection at these two points not that point there but here so those are going to give me my solutions so the actual points of intersection so we're doing part B I've got a coordinate of negative uh, 1 5 so negative 1 5 now that's not a solution we need to write that as a solution so that's x equals negative 1 y equals 5 so that's one solution um, and then the other point of intersection which is down here so that's the coordinate 2 minus 1 so I'll we'll write that down 2 minus 1 so again this is not a solution this is just a point of intersection as a solution be x equals 2 y equals negative 1 so we could check that these solutions are correct by solving the equation simultaneously and then we should get the solution, same solutions as we did graphically example 6 the line with equation y equals 2x plus 1 meets the curve with equation kx squared plus 2y plus k minus 2 equals 0 at exactly one point given that k is a positive constant in part a we need to find the value of k now we sort of covered this in the previous section 
Uh, here we've got a quadratic. It's a U-shaped quadratic because it says K is positive. So this is a positive number. So U-shaped quadratic. And we've got this line Y equals 2X plus 1. Now, none of this is to scale. So you could probably ignore the axis because um, I don't know whereabouts they're going to be. But I do know that they meet at one point. So this line is actually what we call a tangent to this curve. They meet at one point. And what we saw in the last section was that if a tangent and a line meet at one point, that quadratic we get by combining the uh, quadratic and a linear equation, its value of b squared minus 4ac, its discriminant, will be equal to zero. So the first thing we need to do is to combine this linear equation with this quadratic, simplify it, and then we'll work out the value of b squared minus 4ac from that new quadratic and set it equal to zero. And from that, we should then be able to work out the value of k. So if I'm going to combine this uh, linear equation with this quadratic, I want y is equal to, or make x or y the subject. y is already the subject. So I've already got y is equal to 2x plus 1. And that I'm going to substitute into the kx squared plus 2y plus k minus 2 is equal to 0. So that means every y in here is going to get replaced with 2x plus 1. So I will have kx squared plus 2y, that's 2 times by 2x plus 1, plus k minus 2 is equal to 0. k minus 2, not plus 2, is equal to 0. So let's simplify that. That's going to mean expanding some brackets. So I'll have kx squared plus 4x plus 2 plus k minus 2. So I don't really need the brackets anymore because it's going to be plus k minus 2. If I explain those brackets, it's equal to 0. Let's get this looking really like a quadratic. So we've got kx squared. Now, in terms of x terms, I only have this 4x, so plus 4x. Now, with the numbers, I've got plus 2 and minus 2. They're going to cancel out, just leaving k plus k equals 0. Now, I need to work out the discriminant of this. So I want to know the values of a, b, and c. Well, a, which is the coefficient of the x squared term is k, b, which is the coefficient of the x term is 4, and c, that's the number on its own, that's k. So that can go into the discriminant. We'll work out the value of b squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4ac, and that's going to give us um, b squared, so 4 squared, minus 4 times by a, which is k, times by c, which is also k. Now, we have already worked out before that because these two uh, equations, the curve and the line, meet at one point, that means that the discriminant of this equation here, that we've got here, is 0. That means that b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. So now we need to solve this for k. So I have 16 minus 4k squared is equal to 0. So from there, if we take the 4k squared across or add 4k squared to both sides, we'll get 4k squared is equal to 16. We'll have k squared is equal to 4. And if we square root both sides, we will get k is equal to plus or minus 2, but we are told that k is a positive constant, so we can reject the minus 2, and we just finish up with k is equaling to 2. So that will be our solution for the first part. Moving on to part b, it says 
for this value of k, that's k is equal to 2, find the coordinates of the point of intersection. So what I'm going to do is take that value of k and substitute it into this quadratic here, because this is what I would have got to in trying to solve the linear equation in a quadratic. There's no point in putting k is equal to 2 into this, because then I'd have to follow through all of these steps, which I've already done. So I'm going to put k equal to 2 into this here. So if I do that, I will get 2x squared plus 4x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now I can divide everything here by 2, and I've got x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. I can factorise this quadratic, so that's going to be x plus 1 times by x plus 1 is equal to 0. So that's basically x plus 1 all squared is equal to 0. This only has one solution, which is x is equal to negative 1, which is what we were expecting. I wasn't expecting to get two different values because this quadratic and this line only meet at one point. There should only be one solution. So part of that solution is that x is equal to negative 1. I can now substitute this into the linear equation to work out what the value of y is. So this is going to get substituted into y is equal to 2x plus 1. So x is negative 1, so y is equal to 2 times by negative 1 plus 1. So that's y is equal to negative 2 plus 1. So y is equal to negative 1. So I'll just put my solutions. So um, I've got x is equal to negative 1. y is equal to negative 1. But remember, this is a solution to equations. This is not a point of intersection. So I must write it as a coordinate. And that's going to be negative 1 negative 1 and I'll just highlight that so that is the coordinate of that point of intersection so you should now be able to do exercise 3c which is on page 45 of the textbook